is your host, T. West. Welcome to Afro Synergy. An aneurysm for Zionists when 43% of American right-wingers aged 18 to 29 supports Palestinians. When we look at the young generation of Americans, we see a large proportion who have not been programmed and bamboozled with religious teachings peddled for generations from religious seminaries, the lies of, for example, John Hagee, and others permeates the minds of a high percentage of those who are a part of the American baby boom generation. These teachings proliferated in pulpits and across radio and television for decades. Most of the young generation tuned it out and tuned in to other things, video games certainly not being the least, and definitely they tuned into TikTok. Realize the Biden administration inserted language into the Ukraine funding bill to ban TikTok in the United States. This is an example of deceit and how Netanyahu's people control the U.S. government. TikTok is not controlled by the lords of the central banks. Candace Owens, her generation, see the contradictions in a Christian theology that teaches love forgiveness, and that you should not kill and covet that which is your neighbors. They see the U.S. government, religious, and education institutions embracing apartheid Israel as it slaughters mostly Palestinian women and children. It is genocide. In seven months, more than 34,000 Palestinians have been killed and more than 80,000 injured, with hundreds of thousands starving. This has led to an explosive anti-Israel movement in the United States, but also around the world. In fact, it is so profound on U.S. college campuses that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu demanded a crackdown on the protests on college campuses, specifically New York's Columbia University. What's happening on America's college campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. They call for the annihilation of Israel. They attack Jewish students. They attack Jewish faculty. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. It's unconscionable. It has to be stopped. It has to be condemned and condemned unequivocally. But that's not what happened. The response of several university presidents was shameful. Now, fortunately, state, uh, local, federal officials Many of them have responded differently, but there has to be more. More has to be done. It has to be done not only because they attack Israel. That's bad enough. Not only because they want to kill Jews wherever they are. That's bad enough. It's also when you listen to them. It's also because they say not only death to Israel, death to the Jews, but death to America. And this tells us that there is an anti-Semitic surge here that has terrible consequences. We see this exponential rise of anti-Semitism throughout America and throughout Western societies as Israel tries to defend itself against genocidal terrorists. Genocidal terrorists who hide behind civilians. Yet it is Israel that is falsely accused of genocide. Israel that is falsely accused of starvation and all sundry war crimes. It's all one big libel. But that's not new. We've seen in history that anti-Semitic attacks were always preceded by vilification and slander. Lies that were cast against the Jewish people that are unbelievable, yet people believe them. And what is important now is for all of us, all of us who are interested and in cherish our values and our civilization, to stand up together and to say enough is enough. We have to stop anti-Semitism because anti-Semitism is the canary in the coal mine. It always precedes larger conflagrations that engulf the entire world. So I ask all of you, Jews and non-Jews alike, we're concerned with our common future and our common values to do one thing. Stand up, speak up, be counted. Stop anti-Semitism now.
Naturally, in spite of Netanyahu having dual citizenship, he should not be meddling in American affairs. Ashkenazim lobby organizations such as APAC is in its biggest battle since its beginning as protests grow across the United States against the European settlers who erased Palestine from the map. Yet, the victimizers responsible for this erasure perpetually play the role of the most victimized group on earth while being the most privileged and the wealthiest. Below the age of 50, only 31% of American adults sympathize with Israel. This generally means 69% do not sympathize with Israel. This includes right-wingers such as Candace Owens, aligning her with 22-year-old Isra Hissi, the daughter of Representative Ihan Omar. APAC is bankrolling Ihan's opposition in an attempt to remove Ihan from Congress. Isra is an example of the majority of those under the age of 30 being pro-Palestinians. I am certain it is like having an aneurysm for pro-Israelis to wake up and discover 43% of 18 to 29 year old American right-wingers that they support Palestinians. This is astounding when considering the majority of left-wingers in same age category support Palestinians. Overall, only a hardcore John Hagee brainwashed 38% embraces the Israeli genocide of Palestinians. John Hagee is 84 years old and greatly influenced his generation and the generation that followed his generation, where those who are 65 years or older embraces the genocidal killing of Palestinians. At Columbia University and other college campuses, Zionist lobby groups and individuals are demanding anti-Israel banners and protests be banned. Some are even demanding the National Guard be deployed to college campuses to attain the goals that Netanyahu and some members of the U.S. Congress are demanding. Texas Governor Abbott is cracking down on such protests in Texas. Here you will see Texas troopers brutalizing a reporter. This behavior by members of government and leaders in various institutions has increased the conversation and awareness of how widespread the control is of pro-Israeli lobby groups upon the government and American institutions. As I have often indicated, what was established in Palestine in 1948 through terrorism was the Fourth Reich with German money, German fertilizer, German seas, German equipment, and German weapons. Palestine was erased from the map, and the European-Israeli state was established. Today, its biggest trading partner remains Germany. T. West, Afro Synergy News.